Sorry, I was just trying to start the recording. Yes, okay. we could get started. Let me just share the screen. Okay. Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, the Tech Tuesday uh, for today is Assistive Technology for Social Isolation. Um, we're kind of getting to that time where this becomes an issue. Um, and so we're gonna go over some things today for social isolation. I'm, I am gonna describe the pictures on the slide. It just creates better access for everyone. Uh, so the picture on this slide is of um, a group gathering at one of the events that we went to recently by the water um, and just getting out and enjoying the, the nice weather. It also includes our logo um, for Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, Michigan Assistive Technology Program. Can we go to the next slide, Nick? So welcome, uh, my name is Laura Hall. I use she, her, and her pronouns. Um, my email is underneath that line, Laura at MyMDRC, if you're looking to get a hold of me. Um, I've got Nick as my chat moderator today. Um, Nick, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, hello everyone, my name is Nick. And um, feel free to just send whatever you'd like in the chat um, if you have any questions or comments. And if you'd like to speak up as well, you can uh, unmute yourself and just feel free to chime in when you'd like. Um, this is kind of a organic feel free kind of session where we all can bounce off each other with ideas. So we appreciate any feedback or comments. Yes, thank you. We go to the next slide. Okay, so um, just want to start by kind of getting to know you. Um, I'm wondering if you can drop in the chat what county you're from, and if you're a person with a disability, if you're a family member of a person with a disability, if you represent education, health or rehab, um, community living, te uh, technology, or you have some other type of identity. This We also just asked this because this helps collect data for our federal funders. We have uh, from Frank, he is uh, from Eaton and a person with a disability. Okay. And then we have from Sarah, uh, from Ingham, family member of a person with a disability. And then Stephen, um, from Saginaw and a person with a disability. And also myself, I am from Ingham and a person with a disability. And Jill from Ingham, person with disability. And Lauren is also from Ingham and other, uh, has another identity. Awesome. And we also have one from uh, Anna. She's from Muskegon and a person with a disability. Thank you everyone for chiming Great. in. Thank you. That's very helpful to us. Oh, and sorry, Pete. Pete is a person with this disability from Mont, uh, if I'm pronouncing this right, I'm sorry, Montcalm. And then Christina is also a person with a disability and from Genesee. Great. I love that um, we have so many other people from the disability community here today. Um, just so you all know, um, I also identify as a person with a disability. I have cerebral palsy and use a wheelchair. So um, a lot of this AT um, is stuff that I've used or um, have used with other people in the community. Can we go on the next slide, Nick? So we just wanna start out by telling you a little bit about Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. Um, so our vision, uh, MDRC envisions a world where people with disabilities live full lives within the community with equal rights, equity, and opportunities, are valued as essential and vital members of the community, can be their full selves in all of their identities and all aspects of their lives, and have, self, have space for self-discovery, to cultivate community, and to develop pride. Our mission is to cultivate disability pride and strengthen the disability movement by recognizing that civility is a natural and beautiful part of human diversity, 
while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. So to me, this means that um, we don't only just address the civility issues. We realize that people with disabilities have identities in many different areas um, where they may be oppressed for those identities. And so it is the work of our organization to address not only disability issues, but other issues that are oppressing people with disabilities. Um, the picture in, on this slide is of a young girl um, in a wheelchair sitting casually. Next slide, please. Uh, just so you know a little bit about the uh, Michigan Assistive Technology Program, if you're not already aware. Uh, so what is assistive technology? Uh, we consider assistive technology as any tool, software, or app that can help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they want to do. Um, we help people statewide gain access to AT devices um, in the areas of vision loss, hearing loss, cooking and eating, reading, organizing, communicating, uh, calendar reminders, transitioning, help with daily living activities, mental health, outdoor recreation is one of our newer programs that we're very excited about. AT for gaming is another newer area that we're also excited about. Uh, AT for crafting, which we're gonna talk a bit about today. AT for parenting. Uh, guardian gardening um, and connecting with friends and family, which is another thing that we're going to talk about today. Um, our program is free for people with disabilities. Um, we say that our program is for people with disabilities, by people with disabilities, because um, a majority of our staff identify as people with disabilities. Um, so we provide trainings on how to use the AT devices. We call these demonstrations. Um, and then also, so we would, um, if you were looking for a certain device, we would uh, provide you with a demonstration of what we have in our lending library. And then we have those devices available for short and longer term loan um, so that you could take that item home, try it in your home, own home, see if it works, see if it works with your daily routine. Um, we understand that sometimes you just can't decide whether assistive technology will work for you by trying it one time. So that's why we offer both the demonstrations and the short-term loan opportunities. I mean, this helps people to learn what, work, what works and doesn't work for them. Ultimately, we don't want you purchasing AT that's not going to work for you. So um, the picture on the slide is of a, a blind woman utilizing her phone. Next slide, please, Nick. Okay, so getting into the uh, area of social isolation. Um, social isolation, we know, can cause higher rates of anxiety and depression, uh, can be one of the factors related to heart failure, increase of death and hospitalization, uh, can cause feelings of loneliness, loss of interest, loss of sleep, and loss of appetite. Um, Social connection is what is vital to our, our our survival. So we we depend on one another for support. We need that, and if we don't have that, um, we get sadder, sicker, and more at risk of early death. And so some things that have been shown to help prevent that is attending or so or hosting social gatherings, connecting virtually, connecting in person, and getting outside. And we're going to show some AT for all of those things today. Um, can we go to the next slide, Nick? Thank you. Um, and then on top of that, people with disabilities are dealing with um, additional factors. So, you know, I, I hate to say this, but we are seeing another increase in flu, COVID, RSV, um, and illnesses that um, could disproportionately affect people with disabilities. Um, and because people, many people with disabilities have lowered immune system and other risk factors, they are needing even more uh, than non-disabled people to socially or really physically distance themselves from um, in-person activities. Um, and there are other factors that may include things like public transportation, where people need to be in a more crowded setting in order to get where they need to be. Um, that can also be high risk and further limit interaction. So on top of what people are dealing with, with social isolation, 
with regard to, you know, all the illnesses that are coming back up and also the winter time and snow and just being able to get out. Uh, there's these additional factors that are in play too. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, so some of the things that we're going to talk about today are ways to connect via uh, video call services. We're going to talk about smart speakers, um, companion pets. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our outdoor recreation uh, inventory, um, some items that we have for crafting and gaming. And um, this is only kind of touching on what we have available in our inventory. So we're hoping to just kind of give you a good overview of things that we have for social isolation today. Okay, so video call devices are a good way to connect with friends and family. I think a lot of people know this by now, but some people don't um, know how to connect via video. Um, so that can happen, you know, on iPhones and iPads, um, Android phones and tablets. Um, all phones typically come with a uh, a camera and a built-in um, um, smart assistant or uh, also a way to connect via video calls, depending on uh, which phone you have. Um, and we at the AT program are able to uh, help guide people through those features if they're not uh, familiar with how to do that. Um, desktop computers and laptops, usually have built-in or you can get external webcams and headphones to help you connect. And then, of course, there's the smart speakers like the Amazon Echo Show and the Google Home. Um, can we go to the next one, Nick? So I want to talk a little bit about smart speakers because um, those are becoming more popular and um, are really an easy way for people to do a lot of different things at one time. Um, so ways that smart speakers can help you connect. And when I say smart speakers, I'm referring to the Amazon, uh, the Echo, Sh the Amazon Show and the uh, Google Nest. Um, they're very similar. They're both, you know, the smart speakers with a video screen. So um, if you're familiar with the Alexa devices, you may have an Echo Dot, which is simply like a speaker. Um, the, the ones that I'm talking about actually have the video screens to help you connect uh, over the screen. Um, so with the smart speakers on both the Google Nest and the uh, Echo Show, you can watch movies, videos, news stories. Um, you can connect via video with other people who have a smart speaker video device. So you can tell, I could tell my Alexa de device, for example, uh, to call my sister who also has an echo show and um, we can talk to each other on the screen. Um, another thing that you can do with the person's permission, um, if they're not able to call you directly is you can drop in uh, their echo device. So my sister likes to do this just to surprise me all the time um, and say, hello. Uh, but if you have permission, you can, you can tell, I'm not gonna say her name. I'm gonna call her lady A, uh, you know, Drop in on Laura's um, drop in on Laura's Echo Show, and she will drop in in my living room and be able to see what's happening in my living room. A little creepy. That's you know can be very helpful though. Um, you can also place video calls if you don't um, if you don't need to do. I'm sorry. You can place voice calls if you're not looking to do a video call. So you can, I can also just, you know, talk to my sister as I would over the phone, but it's a nice hands-free way of doing it. Um, these devices connect to other devices that have video components. So for example, I have a ring doorbell camera. Um, when someone comes to my door, it shows me who's at my door and, or will tell me that someone's at my door and then also show me on the Alexa screen, um, what's happening outside of my front door. Um, there are also um, ways that you can um, go through cooking recipes that, and the thing I like about this is that they read and show the recipe and ingredients and can actually read through the, um, the cooking recipe for you and at your pace. So you can tell Alexa next up and you can also kind of see it and 
uh, read it at the same time. Um, actually, on the picture on the slide is a, a picture of a um, looks like a father and daughter that are cooking together and perhaps cooking with someone on the other end. So that would be kind of a fun way to socially connect is, you know, you could both decide to make something um, and, and cook together over the video screen. So um, smart speakers. Guys, are... Sorry. I was just going to add in um, something about the smart speaker that was uh, interesting is I we did a video about two weeks ago on the newer um, Amazon Echo Show 10. And the newer one, um, when you have video calls or watching stuff, it even follows you. So you don't have to like turn or turn the device a certain way as you're in the room. It kind of follows your head so that you know what you're looking at all the time. And um, it's really convenient in that way. I have not tried that yet, Nick. So I, I knew that I did that. Um... Yeah, and if you're curious, maybe even if we have time at the end, I can show sort of what it did on the video. Um, it's very uh, intuitive and interesting. Great. Thanks, Nick. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, so if you don't have um, a smart speaker or you're looking for uh, something that's more built into things that you have, um, other video call services include Facebook Messenger, which works across devices. So you could use that on your web browser. Um, and then whether you had Apple or Android, Facebook Messenger works um, for that. It's picture-based. Um, a lot of people like it better than FaceTime, uh, which is through um, the iPhone, not only because it works across the Apple and Android, but because there are uh, fewer button pushes. Uh, a lot of people already use Facebook and, and like that. It's just an easy way to connect. Um, for other other options, if you don't uh, use Facebook, um, might be Zoom, which we're on right now. Uh, Google Meet is another one that's like Zoom through, uh, through Google. Uh, WhatsApp, uh, Skype, which, um, you know, is used, I think is one of the first uh, video connection apps out there but it's kind of gotten overtaken by by zoom but skype is still out there uh can we go to the next slide okay um so some ideas that you might not have thought of to do with video calls uh with other people you could uh host a book or movie club um host a coloring or crafting hour it could be something where um you know, you decide on a craft that you're going to work on. Um, everybody gets the materials for that craft. And then you spend time putting it together uh, by yourself. I have, during COVID, I did use a, a video call. I like to paint, but I don't like to go to the wine and paint um, sessions because I feel like they're too rushed. So I watch them on YouTube. And uh, that's another thing my sister and I did over the Echo Show was paint. Um, together while we were both watching the YouTube video on our TV, but we were talking to each other over the um, over the smart speaker. You could uh, host a spa hour. So you could, you know, put on your mud mask, paint your toenails together and, and talk about the day. Um, again, host a craft or craft or noon. So I think I already um, mentioned this, but you could pick out a craft, have people get what they need for that craft, and then um, work on that craft together. Uh, you could host a watch party of a video or uh, show. Um, Netflix often has, has watch parties where you can click if you both have Netflix and watch it um, together on different TVs at the same time. I believe they changed the name from... Um, uh, watch party to teleplay now, which is on your resource list. Um, and then there are uh, other things like digital escape rooms, um, which are really cool. Um, I came across a Hogwarts disability uh, dis digital escape room, 
where you can um, either do it by yourself or work with other people to find the escape from the room. And so I think one of the nice things for COVID is that a lot of people came up with ideas of things to do for uh, social isolation. And I think now that we're here, I don't think we're really going back. And so um, a lot of these experiences and opportunities are out there. Um, it's just finding them and 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 making them um, making them something that you can do together. You know, just thinking creatively. Uh, the picture on the slide is of a woman um, wearing a mud eye mask and taking a picture, a selfie of herself with her phone in her bathrobe. Can we go to the next slide? Okay. So moving on, um, we have a couple of robotic pets. Uh, which are really interesting. They are um, pets that you don't need to feed, water, clean, clean up with uh, after. Um, they are um, the robotic in the way that they they react to your body. So they they look at you, they move. There's uh, the joy for all pets that we have um, are able to bark. They move their head. They roll over. They purr. Um, we have, there's a cat and a dog. Um, they will snuggle with you. And um, we have some people for which they find this very comforting. They were designed for people with Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, but we're finding that, you know, during these times of social isolation, uh, people who can't have pets for whatever reason, either because they're allergic or can't have one in their home or don't have the ability to take care of one, um, Many find these really helpful and um, really feel like these become um, like real pets to them. Um, we did recently find that they not only have a dog and a cat through Joy for All, but they have a bird um, called the Walker Squawker. Um, Nick and I joke that this was not necessarily my cup of tea, but it could be somebody's um, if you're a bird fan. And um, there are also uh, robotic fish tanks that you can watch and interact with. So I mean, really cool stuff coming out. Uh, this is a picture of one of our uh, our demo participants. Um, she's holding the Jelly for All pet dog. Um, she really, this worked for her so well. Um, so just really neat stuff coming out. Next slide, Nick. Okay. Um, ET for gaming. So a lot of the things that I show on this slide are um, for video gaming, but I wanted to mention that we have um, assistive technology for tabletop gaming. So we have, uh, for example, you can see on the slide some tactile dice that are, um, are meant for people who have trouble distinguishing uh, the numbers on the dice. It might be low vision, it might be neurodiversity or some other reason. Um, but we also have things that help you shake the dice, things that help you uh, uh, shuffle cards, card holders. We have adapted um, Dungeons and Dragons uh, player sheets, um, all sorts of stuff for tabletop gaming, which I think is really cool. And then um, we have uh, really been excited about our adaptive gaming program, uh, video gaming program. Um, we have a variety of adaptive controllers. So for example, um, below the dice, you can see that we have a foot rudder um, joystick where you use your feet to actually navigate and then um, use the buttons. Um, next to that is a picture of myself and my colleague, Abby, and I am using um, something called the uh, arcade stick. Is that right, Nick? Did I get that right? Yes. it's the pxn arcade stick yeah and what i liked about this is that it had one of the old school kind of arcade joysticks that i could grab with my entire hand and then three or four really big buttons um and this was me trying to play a video game um and it took some getting used to but if i had practiced with that i think i could have become really proficient with that um, because it's utilizing my strengths i'm not a fine motor skill person with my cerebral palsy so pushing the buttons and the levers i'm not so quick about but if i have a joystick and four buttons 
I, I can do that. So um, that was really exciting to try that. Um, below that, we have um, some adaptive switches. So one uh, there is called the Able, AbleNet Jelly Bean Switch. It's just a large button that you um, can plug in to take the place of uh, something else that maybe needed to do on the, that you may need to do on the controller. Um, the the AbleNet Micro Light Switch, which is something if somebody has like a very light touch, um, and able to hit that, that might work. And then there's the AbleNet Spec Switch, which um, these all kind of depend on what the person needs. So it would be something where we would look and see, you know, what would work best for you in terms of switches and things like that. And then on the bottom, we have the Logitech Adaptive uh, adaptive Controller, which is really neat. Um, it's, I'm sorry, that's the Xbox Adaptive Controller. If you turn it around to the back, which you can see on the bottom of the screen, there are all sorts of ports back there and you can uh, put in, you know, for every function that you can do on the joystick, there is a port where you can put in an adaptive switch or some other type of device to help uh, make that accessible for someone. So um, that is very cool. Um, so we've talked about the adaptive controllers the adaptive switches. We also have a lot of information on accessibility features on consoles. Um, consoles are not quite up to where they need to be with regard to accessibility, which can be frustrating sometimes, but um, our uh, gaming AT specialist, Abby, also knows a lot about the accessibility features on the on the consoles and within specific games. Specific games also have accessibility features where you can uh, you can turn on and off certain features. Like for a shooting game, for example, I can make it so that it auto um, targets so that it's not so hard for me to try to target. When games are easier to play, I'm gonna play them longer and that, um, that's why that's important. I think that we have those options available for folks. Can we go to the next slide, Nick? Okay, I'm gonna take a drink one second. So um, why is this important? According to Able Gamers, which is a organization that focuses on accessibility within gaming, uh, 35 to 45% of people with disabilities were profoundly socially isolated even before COVID. Um, research on digital video games that shows that, that they contribute to higher levels of well-being, less depression, and less negative affect amongst older adults. Um, going to an arcade or a gaming meetup is also good for social isolation. Um, video games allow individuals to connect with, with family and people who have similar interests. So a lot of games now are multiplayer or massive multiplayer uh, online games where you're playing with a whole community of people. And this helps to create an amazing support network um, and, can, and can foster lifelong friendships. Um, which has a positive impact on one's well-being as well. Um, I have the picture of Abby and I in the last slide. I just wanted to mention that Abby and I actually met online and didn't know that we knew each other in person um, until we until we were like, oh, that's your that's your username. Oh, I'm I'm Tank Princess, you know. So um, just kind of uh, really interesting how you can meet all sorts of people from all over the world by doing gaming. Next slide. Okay. So we have some AT for crafts. So um, not only are we talking about connecting with people today, but I wanted to talk about things that could help um, help with things that you're maybe interested in, hobbies, crafts, interests, um, to help you get back to doing those things if it's something that has been difficult because of disability or age. So. Um, some of the things that we're gonna talk about are AT for painting, uh, for paper crafting, for art, uh, fiber arts, and more. So um, I'm just gonna start by kind of um, explaining the pictures, starting with the one on the lower left-hand corner. Uh, this is something called the Arthrider. 
it's really meant as a writing device um, for a pencil or a pen, but it's something you grab with your whole hand and you put the pencil inside and then you can hold it with your whole hand. Uh, this not only works for pens and pencils, but, um, but uh, markers, colored pencils, art supplies, um, paint brushes. Um, there are many different ways that you can use the Arthrider. Um, next to that are just some large foam grips that we that are shown on the end of a colored pencil. This can make a really big difference for people. Um, just being able to have a thicker grip um, and something that is comfortable to hold on to if you're going to be using it for a long time. So those are some foam grips. Above the foam grips is something called the writing bird, and this is similar to the Arthrider except the, with the writing birds, you set your hand inside of that tray and use your um, pencil glows between your fingers. Um, next to that, we have some uh, push down safety scissors. This is, allows you to use your whole kind of hand to push down while you're cutting. And then finally on the slide is a pair of electric scissors. So um, these, uh, you kind of start the cutting and then they cut on their own. And there's a picture of somebody using the electric scissors uh, underneath a photo of the scissors. Next slide. So AT for painting. Um, we have a variety of different paint brushes. You can see that we have um, up at the top ones that have a bigger grip on the end um, that are in yellow, green, red, and blue. Um, these are just one of the many varieties of paintbrushes that we have with alternate grips. We have lots of different types of paintbrushes. Um, we've also partnered with uh, Zot's Art um, to get access to some of their adaptive painting equipment. Um, so one example is the Art Roller. And um, if you can see these pictures, below the paintbrushes is a picture of um, one of our AT specialists, Kelly. Uh, Kelly's blind and she's using the art roller on a piece of, of paper um, and she's able to do that because it's in a, uh, a guide that allows her to know where to, where to roll the, uh, the paintbrush. Um, you can also use the art roller from a wheelchair, which is really cool that just hooks onto your wheelchair, or um, you can use it as a handle while walking. So there's there's lots of different ways to use these kind of art rollers. And um, I used one when I was younger and made kind of a collage with a lot of other wheelchair users. And it's a really cool thing. To know that you made a piece of art with your wheelchair, with your assistive technology is very cool. Um, we do have some information on do-it-yourself um, AT for painting. One example would be making your own a custom grip with the air, with the air drying modeling clay. So that's just an easy, low tech, low cost adaptation to make some AT. Next slide, Nick. Okay, so AT for art, fiber arts. So this is not my area. Um, I did some talking with the person who does do this. Um, so if any of you are crocheters or knitters and I do not get my terminology right, I apologize. Uh, but I wanted to show some AT for, for knitting and crocheting and things like that. Um, the first one is the, um, if you look on the upper left, these are uh, rings that you can wear that can help you um, control your yarn. It's that finger ring to kind of, you can use and they're actually really cool designs um, that you can use to wrap around your finger and keep track of your, your yarn, which is really cool to me. They come in a variety of different designs, so it, it's almost like an art piece as well. Um, underneath that is a uh, digital stitch counter. Um, apparently with knitting, you need to keep track of your stitches. And this comes with a digital stitch counter including um, including some ergonomic um, knitting hooks that are interchangeable. Uh, it's rechargeable and it also comes with a light, which is nice if you're needing a little bit more light for that. Um, next to that is a um, another adaptive um, handle for crocheting or knitting. 
Um, again, these come with some interchangeable parts, but allows you a bigger handle to hold on to your knitting hook, uh, which is which is cool. Below that is a tactile uh, measuring tape. Uh, these come with different, you know, rivets in it that are uh, different sizes that can help somebody who is blind, has low vision, just has difficulty measuring things, um, know where they are in terms of, of measuring. Um, in the upper right hand corner is a picture of a, uh, a wristwatch that you can wear. This again is more like a tally counter. You just hit it when you're um, when you're trying to keep track of your stitches and your rows. Um, this can also work for golf or any other kind of um, activity where you have um, where you have to keep track of numbers. So that's helpful. Um, I'm blanking out on the name of this last item. Nick, can you help me out? <laughs> I believe it's the the loom. Yeah, is so this the loom. This is a, a manual loom. Um, so this comes with 40 needles and you just uh you you put it through the I'm just I was just looking at this this morning. You put it through the you weave it through the different needles, you um run the crank, and it actually helps you do the uh the weaving and the knitting yourself. I did see that they had an electric version of this, um, which this one, the manual version is about $40. Uh, the electric version was about 140. Um, I did see that it could make uh, round stitches and flat stitches. Um, I don't know what the, the difference is between that, but um, I for someone who does, uh, Fiber Arts, this looks really amazing. And it's it's marketed toward a younger audience. Um, so it seems like it is relatively easy to use and a good way to get started. And then, you know, if you want to move on to, to different things then you could, but um, so that's that. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Okay, so some other um, types of AT that we have. So we have um, a uh, a lighted magnifier floor lamp, uh, which just kind of helps with lighting with your um, with your art projects, with your fiber projects. Good lighting is important, and so um, this enables you to have both the light and the magnification. Um, below that is kind of like an extra large tray, kind of like a TV tray that um, has different, uh, it has a tray on the side and a way to organize your stuff in front of you so that you could have that um, tray right in front of you and have all of your supplies. Um, in the middle of the slide is a wheelchair accessible pottery wheel, which I am dying to try. I just have always wanted to try pottery and I think it'd be really cool. Um, I have not tried this, so I can't speak to a lot of it, but it does have you know the spot for the for the uh, the clay in the middle, and then spaces on the sides for the other things that you may need. Um, below that is a uh, a lighted uh, a lighted magnifier. Again, something more compact that you may need um, when you're working on art. And then finally, in the upper right hand corner is a picture of a wheelchair accessible easel. Um, I really wish I had had these when I was younger and thinking about becoming a teacher. One of the things I always struggled with is is writing on those um, writing on those post-it notes or doing any kind of drawing on those. And so that's that's neat to me that they have these now. Any questions so far? I know I've got kind of full steam ahead. Okay, I'll take that as a no. Next slide, Nick. Oops, um, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no problem. Um, okay, so we know it's getting toward winter, but we're hoping, I'm hoping at least for a mild winter. Um, and one of the things that we believe strongly in is that um, in order for people to, you know, combat social isolation and get outdoors, they need to have a way to get outdoors. 
Um, and so we have invested in some some e-bikes, which are electric bikes. They are um, they're bikes with that have um, batteries and motors on them. So you can adjust um, how much force it takes to pedal the bike. So you can have the full motor on and use it more like a motorbike, or you can dial it back and have it somewhere in between, um, just depending on what you need. I think we are up to, and Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, we have seven e-bikes now, and they all have different features. Um, yes. The one that is in on the slide is called the electric bike. Uh, what's nice about this one is it's a step through bike, so you don't have to uh, you don't have to do a lot of climbing over to get onto it. You can kind of step through it. Um, and these go uh, I think these go up to about twenty six miles per hour based on depending on which bike it is and the battery life of the of the bike. Um, next to that, uh, the e-bike is a picture of Abby and Jalisa. Um, Jalisa on the right is our outdoor recreation specialist. Um, they are working with someone who is out of their wheelchair on one of the e-bikes. And then also I was just going to add in um, about the uh, electric bike. One other convenient part about it, I've actually uh, ridden this and it, the power iron is pretty nice and the tires are nice for different terrain. Um, Except for grass, I wouldn't recommend putting this on grass. Um, but it it folds up and it, it can fit into about like a, a bigger like barrel type size of a space. So like it's able to be put in a trunk or in like a smaller compact maybe car's trunk. Um, so it's nice to be able to have that ability, but to uh, you know transport that a little more easier than some of the other larger trikes or bikes. So just something to add in about that electric bike too. Mm -hmm. And that program is really growing. Uh, we are able to loan the bikes um, depending on, you know, whether they're available and whether we have other people that have them out at the time. But I know um, we have been able to loan some of the bikes out. And that's what's nice about having a variety of bikes in our, our inventory system. Uh, next slide, Nick. Um, so we have a lot more information on outdoor recreation, but for the purposes of time, I had to cut it down. Um, so I just wanted to mention that we have other um, outdoor recreation. We have AT for hunting, um, AT for fishing. I've got a picture on the slide here of a, a strap that you can um, put uh, next to your reel that can help you use your whole hand to reel in instead of just, you know, using your um, your grip with your fingers. Um, we have AT for uh, camping, which I actually forgot to mention on this list, but we have, um, we have some long handled extended uh, marshmallow um, sticks that actually rotate. Uh, automatically on their own to allow you to uh, enjoy your marshmallows. And we have AT for gardening. Um, so we have things like raised beds, um, some adaptive hand tools, uh, things for weeding, things for seeding. Uh, on this slide, I included um, a picture of one of our hand tools that um, has a arm cuff on it so that you can use your whole arm to use the um, a tool instead of just um, instead of just using one one grip with your hand, you can use your the weight of your whole arm. Um, so yeah, so AT for hunting, fishing, gardening, bird watching, hiking, um, and even more. It just keeps getting there's more and more that keeps getting added to this inventory. Um, there's AT for ice fishing too. So if you are a fisherman and want to get there out fishing on the ice, uh, we have AT for that. Next slide, Nick. Um, since it's winter time, I didn't want to leave this slide out. Um, so AT for snowball fun. It's one of the funnest times of winter, I think, is, is snowball fights. Um, this is something minor, but there is an indoor snowball kit. 
So these are just fuzzy snowballs, um, more of a novelty gift, but it's something that could break up the monotony of the winter. If you, you know, brought out some snowballs and had a snowball fight indoors. Um, there's also something for the outdoor, outdoors called the snow slinger, which is kind of like a, uh, oh, how do I describe that? Like a clamp or a mouth that comes down over the snow and packs it together in a ball. And then it's, uh, it's got one of those long handled, uh, long handles that allow you to, to sling it forward almost like they have for the the dog uh tennis balls. Uh so that's a way to have a little fun with this with the snow. Next slide. Um I just wanted to go through a couple of our success stories with with people who um tried some of our AT for social isolation. Um so we had a participant who learned about our program through the Disability Network Capital Area. I know we've got some staff here from DNCAP today. Um, they were looking at apps and other phones that might work better for her and her hearing loss. She uses a cochlear implant and was having difficulty not only using her cell phone, but also keeping track of the conversations in real time. Uh, so our AT specialist demonstrated the use of the live, the live transcribe app on the iPhone. And the participant said, I feel like a kid on Christmas morning who is a puppy under the tree. Um, so just imagine that, you know, not being able to keep up with um, conversations that are happening on both sides, missing out on some information. And really, I can see how that can lead to social isolation. So the fact that we were able to help her, um, you know, reconnect and um, be able to understand the full conversation it's a big win in my book. Can we go to the next slide? Okay. Um, so the next success story has to do with uh, the uh, robotic pets. Uh, someone watched a local news story on the companion pets, and they contacted us about trying out the cat. Um, they had it for just a few days, and they reached out to say, I love my cat. I just want to say thank you. I hold my cat when I'm feeling scared from like a storm, I also sleep with my cat. So good to know that these are helpful. Um, and then this is a gaming success story. Uh, we actually have a um, partnership with Mary Free Bed Rehabilitation Hospital in Grand Rapids, um, who we have provided some gaming equipment for, and they help provide uh, demos to uh, people that are going through the Mary, Mary Free Bed system. Um, so, um, John is a person who had been in a motor, motor vehicle accident that resulted in a spinal cord injury. Um, and it was very important to him that he got back to gaming. He said, for me, it would be keeping my mind off the injury. It's now easy to game with friends online. It can be hard to meet up in person. So gaming allows me to still connect with those I like to game with. Uh, I like to play Call of Duty or Escape from Tarkov with friends. Um, the benefits he finds from gaming are the social aspects and the challenge of his mind while gaming. John used, so um, he used our equipment. He used the Xbox adaptive controller and the Logitech adaptive gaming buttons in rec therapy. Um, and they were able to help him figure out uh, that he needed another piece of uh, equipment called the quad stick, which he uses as a slip and puff controller. So he actually, uh, um, in order to control his uh, PC or his console, he uses his breath. Um, so he will breathe in for one motion, breathe out for another. And he's looking forward uh, to getting a slip and puff controller as it will give him even more adaptability to the games he enjoys playing and um, the independence and returning to gaming. So I really like that story because I think um, it's something that John did before his, his incident, his accident. Um, it's, it's something that's helping him process and work through his accident now. And it's showing them him that he can still do things that he used to do, uh, even if it might be in a different way. So I really like that success story. Um, so this is a story about the e-bikes. Uh, person said, I lived in Traverse City for, for 
many years and was never able to make it long distances on the on the TART trail, the TART trail. MATP showed me how to use the e-bike and I was able to go down the trail a lot longer. Who knew such beauty was right up the road from me? I think that's beautiful. So able to able to help but get places they haven't been, even if it's right uh, nearby where they may live. Uh, next slide, Nick. So we're wrapping up here. Um, again, we just wanted to note that if you're interested in learning more about our organization, uh, re receiving a training or um, AT demonstrations, we just ask that you contact us. The email to contact us, and Nick, if you could add this in the chat, is at at mymdrc.org. And then we've also got listed some general information for Michigan Disability Rights Coalition if you're interested in getting in touch with us. Are there any questions or comments? Christina said, thank you. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, thank you all for joining us for this hour. I hope this was helpful. I hope um, we probably won't see anyone until after the holidays. So I hope that you all have um, a great holiday and spend some time with family or friends. Um, maybe have some time to do some things that you enjoy um, and let us know if any of the SAT can help. We also have a happy holidays from Sarah to everyone. If there are no questions, I think we'll wrap up for today. Thank you so much for attending. Um, Nick, can you let us know when our next Tech Tuesday is? Yes, so let me just double check on the date to make sure one moment. Um, I, it is in January. Um, and I believe it is the 10th, it's the 10th. So January 10th of 2023, at the same time at noon, will be our next Tech Tuesday. And that is on um, assistive technology for youth. So we have a variety of uh, technology for um, youth ages, um, you know, infant to 18. And so very interesting stuff, a lot of variety of uh, stuff for different recreational activity or learning or, um, stuff that might help parents out with their kids in general. Um, and so we will cover more of that when it comes in January. Okay. Thanks everyone, have a great day. Will Dejeuner be presenting that one? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Yes, it will be her. And then I am not positive if anyone else will be joining her, but she will be the lead on that um, presentation. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Thank Happy you. Holidays, Thank everyone. you. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays to you, too. Thank Bye, you, everyone. everyone. Thank you, Charlie.